Hi everyone, it's Brandon. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a medical writer, skincare researcher, if you will. I've published over a thousand medical articles, all of which you can find freely online, most of which have been focused in the field of dermatology and skincare research, and I will leave a link down below so you can check those out. I hope you had a good weekend. I watched Moulin Rouge last night for like the first time in forever and the first time in forever uh and i haven't seen that in a long long time i really love the music but have you ever watched something after like years of not seeing it and you watch it and you're like you, you see it from a totally different perspective but it still like triggers memories of when you watched it the first time same with like music i think that's really fascinating i don't i just had like a different perspective and i was seeing different things in the movie I've never seen before. I also live in New York City and they have the Broadway show Moulin Rouge. It's obviously not running right now, but I'm actually curious to know like how that whole show worked. I would love to see it possibly if it comes out. Anyway, I, oh, today I'm wearing the, just, just for reference, I'm wearing the Bono Baji, I think it's a Korean sunscreen, Bono Baji Milk Thistle sunscreen SPF 50 for a, PA plus it's a chemical sunscreen. I'm not wearing my normal like tinted mineral sunscreen that I usually wear every single day. Kind of just giving my skin a break from that. Uh, Cause every day, every day I have to wash my, I have to get in the shower, wash my face off with, do the double cleanse, do the oil and do the, the, the facial cleanser to try and get off that tinted mineral sunscreen. And that's kind of a chore, but I'm trying to give my skin a break from doing that today at least. Um, and I, even though I really like tinted mineral sunscreens, or even though I really like chemical sunscreens, I prefer mineral sunscreens, particularly tinted mineral sunscreens, just because they provide a physical blocking agent from UV, from even visible light and blue light, the iron oxides in particular, but also large particle zinc to a certain degree, offers some protection against blue light and, and visible light, which also induce free radicals and oxidation in the skin that may potentially contribute to skin aging. And I had a comment the other day on a on whether or not I recommend the La Roche-Posay tinted mineral sunscreen. I think it's the um, Anthelios tinted mineral sunscreen. And this sunscreen only contains titanium dioxide. And I tend to not generally recommend titanium dioxide only sunscreen, similar to if you watched my review of the Pyongkong Yule Mild Auto Sunscreen, which is an SPF of 45, I think. That was, that's a Korean sunscreen, I believe. And that only contains titanium dioxide in it. But I, I said in the video that I didn't really recommend it, even though it has broad spectrum ability, it's not going to, well, let me just go, I think the best way to sort of explain why I don't necessarily recommend that, especially if you're going outside and being outdoor or you're like sitting by a window and you're getting visible light and UV penetrating that window on your skin every day. I don't normally recommend titanium dioxide only sunscreens. Now in regard to the Anthelios to the mineral sunscreen, one thing that I really like is that it is tinted. So it's going to provide that protection from blue light and visible light. And it's going to also camouflage the, the white appearance of the titanium dioxide, which isn't as strong as zinc oxide in my personal opinion. But, you know, I really like that. The one thing I don't like, again, is the fact that it only uses titanium dioxide rather than zinc oxide. And to fully understand why I don't like that, you have to kind of understand first the, 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 aspects of UV, the, the UV radiation that we experience here on Earth that contributes to the visible signs of skin aging as well as skin cancer and increasing your skin cancer risk. So ultraviolet radiation or UV is the main components of radiation that we concern ourselves with in regard to our skin health are UVA and UVB. So UVB, uh, ultraviolet B radiation, contributes to sunburns. It also it contributes to DNA, DNA strand breaks in the skin and can drive skin cancer risk. And we see the effects of UVB almost immediately, if not you know, a few hours down the road after we've been outside on the beach near the pool and we see the redness in our skin or we see the sunburn and then the eventual sun-induced tan. Now, the UVA is actually going to drive the your aging, your visible signs of aging risk. Um, UVA, ultraviolet A radiation, it contributes up 
upwards to 80, sometimes maybe even 90% of the visible signs of aging, depending upon the paper that you're reading. So there's two aspects of UVA radiation. There's UVA1, which covers 340 to 400 nanometers of ultraviolet radiation. And then there's UVA2, which is 300 to, I think, 340. Um, and both of these are going to contribute to the visible signs of aging. Now, there are plenty of very powerful, potent, robust filters out there that are going to block or absorb both forms of UVA. When it comes to when it comes to mineral sunscreen filters, zinc oxide is going to be your best bet for protecting against both UVA1 and UVA2, particularly large particle zinc, but even micronized zinc to a certain extent also protects against both UVA1, UVAB, so it provides that broad spectrum protection, if you will, um, aside from UVB that protects against the UVA for both UVA1 and UVA2. So zinc oxide is phenomenal in that aspect. Zinc oxide, however, isn't great at filtering out UVB, at least to the same extent as UV or as titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is another mineral filter, just like zinc oxide. It sits on the skin and reflects light, reflects visible light and UV, so that it, it's just sort of a blocking agent. It doesn't absorb it, it just blocks it from penetrating the skin. Titanium dioxide is great at protecting against UVB, so protecting against a sunburn. Again, zinc oxide isn't as robust as titanium dioxide in that degree. But titanium dioxide is a really also great filter for protecting against UVA, but only UVA1 and not UVA2. So you're not giving this you're not getting the same breadth of coverage against the aging rays, but you know, both forms of UVA as you are from zinc oxide. That's why a lot of mineral sunscreens include both minerals, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, to really protect against both sunburn as well as the the risk of, of skin aging but also uva in addition to skin aging just as a side note it also contributes to free radical production in the skin as well as uh, mutations in dna and those free radicals the oxidation that is in the skin that's produced from uv light or from the uv radiation facilitates the degradation of enzymes that control or uh, induce or degrade collagen and elastin. So you have, so you really have to make sure that you are choosing a sunscreen that offers that breadth, that broad spectrum, truly broad spectrum protection against UVA1, UVA2, as well as UVB. So titanium dioxide, in contrast to zinc oxide, protects against UVA2 and not really against UVA1. Again, it's great for protecting against UVB, which helps to protect against a sunburn, but you're not getting that same breadth of coverage or protection as you are with zinc oxide when it comes to both forms of UVA, UVA1 and UVA2, if you're using just a titanium dioxide sunscreen. So even though a titanium dioxide sunscreen that just uses titanium dioxide, like the Anthelios La Roche-Prose to mineral sunscreen, even though it can be labeled as broad spectrum because it protects against UVA2 and UEB, you're not getting that protection from UVA1. And if you're really, really gung-ho on protecting your skin from the visible signs of aging, uh, then you really need to make sure that you're choosing a sunscreen that contains, or at least a mineral sunscreen that contains zinc oxide in addition to titanium dioxide, because that's going to, that that's just going to provide a synergistic effect that's going to protect you from all forms of UVA, UVA1, UVA2, as well as UVB. So you're going to get that broad spectrum protection. That's why a lot of sunscreens, mineral sunscreens, contain a mixture of both minerals, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, so that you can get that, that breadth of coverage. That, you want to make sure that you're getting a comprehensive uh, coverage that you are, you know, if, if you're going outside or even if you're indoors and you're getting light or UV radiation from the windows, you want to make sure that you're protecting your skin uh, in a comprehensive manner against all forms of UVA as well as the UVB. UVB doesn't really penetrate the windows, but you get my you get my argument, I, I hope. Now the Anthelio sunscreen also contains antioxidants and <clears throat> are products that contain antioxidants and to a certain degree that can also just assist or, or elevate your protection against sunlight exposure, against radiation coming from the sun, as well as possibly environmental pollutants and things in our environment that induce 
free radicals and oxidation in the skin that drive inflammation and drive the aging process and in regard to other other issues you know i don't really i haven't really researched la roche posay i think they do have a good r d program that i think la roche posay i think they do have an a good r d program i think they do a lot of research and in their development process to make sure that things like their like their antioxidants are actually working or doing what they claim to do on the on the bottle. I could be wrong. I I don't really know for sure, but it the thing about antioxidants is you're is you're never really sure, especially if they don't have studies, even if they're just industry funded studies, they don't have a lot of clinical trial data to show that they are stable and they're doing the work in your skin that they claim to do or that even that they show in things like in vitro studies where they're testing it in cell lines or, or something like that. So so just keep that in mind. But I, I try to reach for something, even sunscreen, mineral sunscreen, tinted mineral sunscreen that has antioxidants in it, just, just for a little bit of added protection, just in case that it is doing something similar to the Elta MD tinted mineral sunscreen that I use, the SPF 41. I actually have both. I have the SPF 41, which is the light, lightly tinted, and then I have the Elements. Yeah, the Elements, which is a little bit darker and too dark for my skin tone, but I still have it and I still use it. Uh, the, the lightly tinted has antioxidants. I think it has quercetin and alpha lipoic acid, I think. I'm pretty sure, I hope. I hope I'm not mixing that up with something else. But yeah, that contains zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, as well as the iron oxides for tint. So I really like using that one in lieu of just a titanium dioxide only sunscreen. I hope that this really has helped you to understand why I don't generally recommend a sunscreen that only uses titanium dioxide. It's just, it doesn't provide you that, again, that breadth of coverage that you would get from something that also contains zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is going to be great. Just the take home points for this. Zinc oxide is going to be great for protecting yourself from both UVA1, UVA2, and it's going to do a lot more for you than titanium dioxide and protecting your skin from the visible signs of aging induced by UV radiation. And like, and then in contrast, titanium dioxide is going to protect you from UVB, to protect you from a sunburn, and help to possibly support in the protection against, or at least reducing the risk of skin cancer. So that's going to be a big thing. Really choose a mineral sunscreen that's going to provide you both zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, that's going to do you more favors than something that only contains titanium dioxide, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the La Roche-Posay Enthelios Tinted Mineral Sunscreen, I could see it actually working. I'm trying to get comfortable. I can see it actually working if like you are maybe working in a windowless room all day and you're sitting in front of a computer and you want to get that protection against blue light with that tint, with that iron oxides. I could see that being okay. Still, at the same time, you're not going to be in a windowless room all, all day from, you know, sunrise to sunset, hopefully. So even then, you want to make sure that you are getting adequate or sufficient protection against UV that's coming through the windows, even if you're not going outside. But that being said, I could see that being a situation where you are using it or maybe even, I don't know, maybe like a primer or something. Like for, for example, the, the Pyongkong Yule sunscreen, mild auto sunscreen, that's just a titanium dioxide only sunscreen. It isn't tinted, but I could see that as being a good moisturizer base before you add on a zinc oxide, titanium dioxide sunscreen, tinted sunscreen. I could see that, you know, using that as a base. I don't really know if that would work the same way as like the tinted Anthelio sunscreen, but I don't know, just leave me comments down below and let me know what your experience is with that if you've actually used it. Okay, I'm not used to talking all day, so I'm gonna take a drink of water. Ah. And if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. I would love to have you here for future videos. Hit that subscribe button as well. Stick around, I would love to communicate with you about skincare, skincare research on topics. I cannot speak right now. But um, yeah, stick around. I will see you next time. Okay. So thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. Please hit the like button down below if you found this video helpful and stick around too. Hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. I'd love to communicate and explore research topics or skincare research topics and sunscreen recommendations, skincare recommendations. Leave your comments down below as well. And I will see you in a future video. I'll see you later. Bye.